News Channel 5 E-Classifieds. Bid, buy, sell, free. NewsChannel5.com. Now Zarqawi has met his end. And this violent man will never murder again. President Bush announcing the death of Abu Musab al-Zakari, the terrorist Osama bin Laden himself called the Prince of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. He was killed by a laser-guided bomb dropped by an American F-16 after an intelligence coup pinpointed his location. I'm Bob Schieffer. We'll devote most of our broadcast to this story tonight, how it happened, what it will mean to the future of Iraq and the worldwide war on terrorism. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Good evening. They called Abu Musab al-Zarqawi the slaughtering sheik, the most feared, the most brutal of all the terrorists in Iraq. Well, no more. Tonight, he is the dead man. The terrorist whose forces set off so many of the bombs that killed and crippled so many Americans and Iraqis was killed himself last night by U.S. bombs. How it happened now from our national security correspondent, David Martin. The final moments of Zarqawi's violent life were played out in a remote farmhouse amid a grove of palm trees. Isolation, he felt, protected him from prying eyes, but in fact made him a sitting duck. Major General William Caldwell describes the action as two F-16s zero in on the house. The lead aircraft is going to engage it here with a 500-pound bomb on the target. That probably did it, but just to be sure... They are going to do a re-attack and you'll see the second 500-pound bomb go in. Starting with the bombing of U.N. headquarters in Iraq, Zarqawi had directed a relentless campaign of indiscriminate slaughter, stopping at nothing, even personally beheading hostages. But after years of frustration, the U.S. military could finally say, Abu Musab al-Zakari is dead. Iraqi police pulled his body from the rubble and cleaned him up for his final mugshot. Fingerprints proved who it was. There were six bodies in all, including a woman and child, possibly Zarqawi's wife and baby. And this man, Sheikh Abin al-Rahman, remember the name. This gentleman was key to our success in finding Zarqawi. As a top lieutenant of his, he was identified several weeks ago to military sources from somebody inside Zarqawi's network. Al-Rahman was Zarqawi's spiritual advisor, which turned out to be a luxury Zarqawi couldn't afford because Al Rahman unwittingly led U.S. Special Operations Forces to the safe house. Through painstaking intelligent effort, they were able to start tracking him, monitoring his movements, and, and establishing when he was doing his link-ups with Zarqawi. The last link-up took place yesterday evening in the town of Bakaba, 40 miles northeast of Baghdad. An unmanned spy plane watched as Zarqawi and Rahman drove down a road leading west out of town and turned into the farmhouse. It was a perfect setup. Last night was the uh, first time that we have had definitive, unquestionable information as to exactly where he was located. While American and Iraqi troops picked through the rubble, other soldiers were going after the rest of Zarqawi's network, raiding 17 of his safe houses in and around Baghdad. They'd been holding off on, on hitting these safe houses because they didn't want to spook Zarqawi just as they were closing in on him. The U.S. military says these raids have already yielded a treasure trove of intelligence, Bob. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. Uh, the news set off cheering in the streets of Baghdad, of course, but it also brought more violence. Elizabeth Palmer is there and has that part of the story now. On the streets of Baghdad, jubilation. Damn you, Zarqawi, he shouts. May you burn in hell. Oh, I think all the, all the uh, people are happy about this news. Members of Iraq's security forces, some of Zarqawi's favorite targets, were among the most relieved. Inshallah. Now, God willing, he says, things will settle down. But they haven't yet. At least five separate bombings killed another 40 people in Baghdad today. In the longer term, though, Iraq's national security advisor is optimistic. I expect uh, a, a palpable, noticeable reduction of the number of attacks. We've heard this before, though. Saddam Hussein's capture in December of 2003 was also supposed to be a turning point in reducing violence. 
But as it turned out, the insurgency was just warming up. Zarqawi's elimination is different, insists the Iraqi government. Uh, Zarqawi is, is unique in a sense that he used uh, these spectacular attacks to create maximum casualties among civilians, indiscriminate killing of civilians, especially targeted against Shia, try to incite civil war between the Shia and Sunnis. Zarqawi was responsible for many of Iraq's bloodiest and boldest attacks, including the bombing of the Holy Shiite Shrine in Samarra, which touched off violence that killed more than a hundred people. Now that he's dead, the new Iraqi government hopes his foreign fighters will be left in disarray and they can use the lull to persuade Iraqi Sunni insurgents to lay down their weapons. That may be easier, thanks to a compromise announced today that shares the responsibility for Iraq's security forces between Sunnis and Shiites in the cabinet. The new interior minister, Jawad al-Bulani, a Shiite, told CBS News he would be reaching out to Iraq's Sunnis. My message to all Iraqis, he said, is that we will serve them in an unbiased and professional way. At about the same time, there was a very different message on the website of al-Qaeda in Iraq. There, the group vowed to continue their jihad. Bob? Elizabeth, is there any idea, any line of succession as to who is going to replace him, or will anyone replace him? Well, it depends who you believe. On that website, I referred to the message was signed by someone claiming to be the deputy of al-Qaeda in Iraq, a man called Abu Abdel Rahman, apparently an Iraqi. However, the American military believes it will be an Egyptian, Abu al-Masri. Uh, quite frankly, most officials here are hoping there will be some infighting and a real power struggle that will cripple the organization even further. All right. Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth. A White House that has been too often burned by overly optimistic battlefield assessments hung out no mission accomplished signs today. Even so, this was the kind of news the administration has been looking for and the president was anxious to talk about it. Jim Axelrod with that now. Jim? On one hand, Bob, the White House is energized by some badly needed good news. But as one senior administration official told me, quote, we're not delusional. Real challenges lie ahead. Terrorist in Iraq. Which explains the sober, measured Zarkawi tone of President Bush this commander. morning. Zarqawi is dead. But the difficult and necessary mission in Iraq continues. Mr. Bush spoke nearly 16 hours after the White House first heard that Zarqawi might be dead. News that came in a 3.45 p.m. phone call from Ambassador Zal Khalilzad to National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley. The president was meeting with members of Congress just back from Iraq including Illinois Representative Ray LaHood. And at the end, I said, Mr. President, I think the one thing that could really make a difference uh, would be if we got Zerkawi. Well, we were all sort of like, well, yeah. Little did they know, he was already dead. Thirty-five minutes later, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld called. A general had seen the body and was sure it was Zarqawi. The giveaway? Zarqawi had tattoos removed. There were scars where the tattoos would have been. To which the president responded, that would be a good thing. At 11 p.m., Hadley and Khalilzad decided that Iraqi Prime Minister al-Maliki should make the announcement in Baghdad. The president called him at 7 this morning. They spoke for 25 minutes until just before Mr. Bush walked into the Rose Garden. Mr. Bush once told CBS News that he kept little pictures of major terrorists in his desk and put a little check next to each one as they were put out of business. I asked today if Sarkawi's picture now had a little check and was told the president no longer has those pictures. Well, pictures or not, there's a big name still to be checked off, the biggest, in fact, Osama bin Laden. Bob? Okay, Jim. Uh, just a while ago, I spoke by satellite to the U.S. ambassador in Iraq, Zalmay Khalilzad. How badly has this hurt al-Qaeda? I think it has done uh, significant damage uh, to al-Qaeda uh, in Iraq in particular uh, because uh, this man was the architect, the mastermind uh, of the movement here. But there still the organization is able uh, to uh, uh, do harm and I anticipate uh, they will try to demonstrate that they are still able to do damage and uh, expect uh, them to express themselves in the coming uh, hours and days. What should we expect now, Mr. Ambassador? 
I've seen adults crying with pleasure, Iraqis on the streets dancing. So this could be a moment of opportunity for Iraqi leaders to pull together uh, and to unite the country and to face the, rem the remnants of Al-Qaeda as, as one people. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, and the best of luck to you. Our correspondent, Kimberly Dozier, put together a background report on al-Zakawi uh, before she was wounded in a car bomb blast last week in Baghdad. Her story underlines just what a monster he had become, and we want you to see it. Abu Musab al-Zarqawi had started as a local terrorist, graduating through multiple bloody attacks to become Osama bin Laden's chief operative here. In 2004, his group proclaimed their allegiance to bin Laden and neatly changed its name from monotheism and jihad to al-Qaeda of Iraq. Zarqawi claimed responsibility for some of the worst violence this country has seen, including the massive attack on the United Nations compound in 2003, hauntingly caught on film by a CBS cameraman at a press conference. Zarqawi also attacked Shiite targets, his stated goal to turn Sunni Muslims against Shiites and turn Iraq into a militant fundamentalist state. Zarqawi started the trend of grisly kidnappings and beheadings with American Nicholas Burr, his first victim. A string of other kidnappings followed with the terrible executions then broadcast on the internet. And he expanded his murderous empire to Jordan, where he had once been jailed. He sent suicide bombers, including a husband and wife team, to hit three western hotels. The husband and wife attacked a wedding party. Although the wife's explosive belt failed to detonate and she was later captured, her husband's bomb killed dozens. The violence backfired on al-Qaeda, producing an outcry against Zarqawi's movement, where once there had been support. Zarqawi has since called the attack on the wedding party, at least, a mistake. That has done little or nothing to diminish the anger in Jordan. Days later, more than 70 members of Zarqawi's own family took out half-page ads in major Jordanian newspapers, disowning him forever. Kimberly Dozier, in a background report she wrote before being wounded, uh, as you may know, she was flown back to Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland yesterday, where she continues to be treated. We'll have more on the death of Zarqawi and what it may mean for the future of Iraq when the CBS Evening News continues after this. There are so many aches and pains that keep you from getting a full night's sleep. But starting tonight, there's a new PM that has them covered. Introducing new Advil PM, the first and only PM with Advil. Now get multi-pain relieving power plus a non-habit forming sleep aid to gently ease you to sleep. Nothing's proven better on tough nighttime pain. When aches and pains keep you up, there's new Advil PM. Stop hurting and start sleeping. At CVS Pharmacy, we accept all the new Medicare prescription plans, including the AARP Medicare RX plan and Humana, with the same low prices as other pharmacies. But we think prescriptions involve more than dollars and cents, such as individual attention and expertise delivered with care. So come join us. Simply bring in your prescription bottles and we'll do the rest. Right now, show your Medicare prescription card and get a welcome kit filled with $60 in coupon savings to spend over the summer. CVS Pharmacy. Expect something extra. Tonight, the potentially devastating meteor shower. To hold more when you really need it, use Glad Force Flex trash bags. And you won't have to be afraid of overstuffing. For stretchable strength, get Glad. From Robert Altman comes a story. You might think about cutting down on the uh, desserts and uh, sex with men. About a different kind of family. What are you writing? Poem. What's it about? Suicide. Oh. She put a hose in his tailpipe. Life is a struggle, and if you should ever feel really happy, be patient. This will pass. The bone goes open. A Prairie Home Companion, rated PG-13, starts Friday. <laughs> what are you doing? Getting ready for my test. A test? What subject? Cholesterol. Are you nervous? Well, last time I didn't do so great. You? Yeah, but I'm getting extra help. Cheerios is the only leading cold cereal proven to lower cholesterol. Grandpa, I hope you score 100 on your test. Well, I'm shooting for something like 190. <laughs> 
Still, how does new Tidy Cat's litter work? Well, each granule is formulated to absorb quickly and lock in odor better than ever. So can I invite some friends? Uh, yes. New Tidy Cat's multiple strengths for multiple cats. We're going to uh, continue our focus now on the Zarqawi story and for some perspective on today's developments, two real experts, Tom Friedman, the Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the New York Times, and CBS News analyst Michael Scheuer, who once headed the unit at the CIA that tracked Osama bin Laden. First, Tom Friedman, how important is this? This is the all-star of all-stars of terrorism. And the Al-Qaeda people can say, oh, we'll replace him with somebody else. This is a guy who eluded the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, CIA, NSA, British intelligence for three years. A guy like that, they don't replace really quickly. We have not won by this one-day event, not at all. But it's a good step. It's one day of good news after so many unremitting days of bad news. You wrote the other day that this is moving from being an insurgency in, into just anarchy. Absolutely. Will that change now? To the extent that this takes one element out of the pie, and it's not going to take it out, but it reduces it, which is the foreign fighters, and gives a chance maybe for people inside in the government to focus on that war of all against all inside, it's a good move. It's an it's a important development. Thank you very much, Tom. Pleasure. Michael Scheuer is in our Washington bureau. Uh, Michael, I want to ask you, it's my understanding you believe this might actually increase danger for U.S. Uh, troops? I, I think that's probably the case, Bob. The, the uh, Zarqawi was really off the reservation for al-Qaeda in terms of his willingness or eagerness to fight Shias. And with him out of the way, I suspect the next al-Qaeda leader in Iraq will focus more on American forces and the Iraqi government than actually just uh, fighting against the Shia. What do you think the real significance of all this is, Michael? Any day you can kill Abu Musab al-Zarqawi is a good day for Americans, sir. But in the long run, I think it's a great tactical victory. Strategically, it's not very important. Al-Qaeda always plans for succession. And the next person they put in there is less likely to be trying to provoke a civil war with the Shia, which means the Shia insurgents and the Sunni insurgents probably will refocus their efforts on American forces, British forces, and the forces of the Iraqi government. All right, Michael Scheuer. Thank you very much, Michael. You're welcome, sir. And still ahead, could the death of Zarqawi mean lower gas prices? We'll look at the economic fallout next. Good thing there's the speed of Maalox and a chewable, because nothing's faster. Maalox, kick acid. Meet Kate and Edward Lipkins, investors. I'm a math teacher. I teach French. And we weren't keeping on top of our investments. You know, we had a broker, but... But he always recommended stuff from his company. So now we invest on our own. And I've picked some good investments. We've picked. On TD Ameritrade offers stocks, bonds, and mutual funds from third-party companies and independent ratings and research to help you choose. Independence is the spirit that drives America's most successful investors. I'm Ann, and I'm a GSK scientist. I just started Alzheimer's research when my grandmother was diagnosed. I wanted to hurry up and find a cure. We started working on ideas that no one else had tried and we're getting closer. What I see in the lab is very exciting. What I see at last is hope. GlaxoSmithKline. Today's medicines finance tomorrow's miracles. Are you at home trying to sleep but your mind is still at the office? Reviewing tomorrow's agenda? Charting out the future? Maybe it's time for you to be the boss. Ask your doctor about Lunesta. Even if you've never thought of taking a prescription sleep aid before, Lunesta is non-narcotic and approved for long-term use. And Lunesta can help you get a full night's sleep at last. Lunesta works quickly, so take it right before bed. Of course, do not use sleep medicines for extended periods without first talking to your doctor. Be sure you have at least eight hours to devote to sleep before becoming active. Until you know how you'll react to Lunesta, you should not drive or operate machinery. Do not take Lunesta with alcohol. Most sleep medicines carry some risk of dependency. Side effects may include unpleasant taste, headache, drowsiness, and dizziness. For a great night's sleep, 
Leave the rest to Lunesta. Ask your doctor. If I said feline. Bacon! Cats? Bacon! Kitty, kitty, kitty. Bacon, bacon, bacon! Bacon strips? It's bacon! No, it's bacon strips, Brad. Books don't know it's not bacon. The uh, price of oil fell today after word of Zarqawi's death. How much of a ripple effect did this news have on the markets? Here is our business correspondent, Anthony Mason. The oil market celebrated Al Zarqawi's death. Psychologically, it is good news for oil. On the New York Mercantile Exchange, crude dropped below $70 a barrel for the first time in two weeks. It recovered some, but still closed down nearly half a dollar on the day as traders like Ray Carbone saw a blow to the insurgency that's disrupted critical oil supplies. And perhaps leading to some resurgence of the Iraqi exports coming out of Basra and the north of Iraq. Iran, OPEC's second largest oil producer, also had some good news for the markets. Iran's president said he's willing to discuss Iran's nuclear program with the West to, quote, resolve misunderstandings, end quote. By some estimates, the troubles in Iraq and Iran have added a 5 to $10 terror premium to the price of every barrel of crude. There is a sense that the lessening of the tensions with Iran is going to lower that risk premium. And, and, and the combination of Iran and the elimination of al uh means that uh, oil prices could come down, and, and maybe dramatically so. The world's stock markets came down dramatically today. Asia had its worst day in two years after a global wave of interest rate increases by the European Central Bank and six more countries. Those rising rates could slow the global economy, which would slow demand for oil, driving down the price even more. The market's still very volatile, but analysts say if all these conditions hold, gas could get a lot cheaper. Bob? All right. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. We uh, told you a few weeks ago about a breakthrough in the fight against cervical cancer, the first vaccine to protect women from a sexually transmitted virus that causes most cases of the disease. Well, today the FDA gave the vaccine final approval for girls and women ages 9 to 26. It's called Gardasil, and it should be available by the end of the month. Coming up next, terror victims' families respond to today's events. Some of their reactions are very surprising. I'm in this for the long haul. We got a lot more teaching in us. Centrum Silver takes your health to heart. Our multivitamins are age-adjusted with high levels of B vitamins, which may help support heart health. Centrum Silver, adjusted for your age and your life. Could you bring me a decision? Pour réfléchir. Pour me rendre prisé. Ah! I wonder where the clock went. New liquid plumber power jet. Blast clogs away in three seconds. That's me, Evelyn. And it's my seventh day with Prilosec OTC. Never thought I'd last through race week with my frequent heartburn. But with Prilosec OTC, I'm good to go. Day two, got the party started. Day five, met my man Jeff Burton. Today, 200 laps and zero heartburn. Imagine zero heartburn for 24 hours with one pill a day. That's my Prilosec OTC. It's day seven for me. What day are you on? If you ran a drug company, what would you change? I would try to prevent disease, not just treat it. I would go after the really tough diseases. I'd make it so folks wouldn't have to choose between their groceries and their medicine. At Merck, we believe in the same things you do. Because 50 years ago, George Merck told us to put patients first by creating novel medicines and vaccines and getting them to the people who need them. I would try to see everything through the eyes of a patient. Merck, where patients come first. All of us have internal plumbing. But for some of us with frequent bladder urges, doing errands also means knowing where all the bathrooms are along the way. The worry your pipes might leak means you don't always detour from your route. But you can take another direction. Talk to your doctor about how to take care with Vesicare. Vesicare, once a day, can reduce urges and may help effectively manage bladder leakage day and night. If you have certain types of stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems, do not take Vesicare. 
While taking Vesicare, if you experience a serious allergic reaction, severe abdominal pain, or become constipated for three or more days, tell your doctor right away. Common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and indigestion. A chance to follow a whim, not always your urges. It's not just a pipe dream. Ask your doctor today if Vesicare is right for you. Coming up in just moments on News Channel 5 at 6, Perry March is found guilty of conspiring to kill his former in-laws. Steve McNair talks about leaving the Titans and the CMAs in full country swing. We have a recap now of tonight's top story, the death of the notorious leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, the man behind many of the war's deadliest terror attacks. It was a U.S. airstrike leveled on an al-Qaeda safe house northeast of Baghdad uh, after a tip-off from a captured terrorist that caused his death. His body was found in the rubble by Iraqi police. President Bush called it a victory in the war on terror, but warned there are still tough days ahead. Iraq's prime minister says the $25 million bounty on Zarqawi will be paid, but no word on who will get it. No one really knows how many deaths he was directly responsible for, certainly thousands, and some of his most shocking murders were of Americans. So families and friends of terror victims spoke today about their feelings after learning of Zarqawi's death. Here is Byron Pitts. Today, from unfamiliar places like LaPorte, Indiana, hometown to one of the five Americans still held hostage in Iraq. Osama is next. To Encino, California, Danny Pearl's hometown. You remember Daniel, the American journalist executed by terrorists. When Danny died, the angel cried and this is the first time in four years that I saw the angels smile. The death of Abu Musab al-Zarqawi means many things. Progress in the war on terror to the country. But for families directly touched by the terrorist, it's personal. Zarqawi didn't kill Daniel Pearl. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed did. But to Danny Pearl's father, they're all the same. He represents the entire culture and the ideology that took Danny's life and the threatened to threaten our civilization. And I hope it's the beginning of the end. And nowhere in America is today's news more personal, perhaps, than here in Wilmington, Delaware, home to Nick Berg's family and friends. Berg was the 26-year-old engineer, believed to have been beheaded by Zarqawi. He had contacted me the night before his final trip to Iraq. Dave Scalish worked with Nick Berg for two years. He's relieved Zarqawi's dead, but worries who will replace him. It's like organized crime. You know, they, they take care of one member of the family. There's another one ready to replace them. So across the country today, reaction varies. But most agree Zarqawi's death won't change the reality in Iraq overnight. Won't erase the nervous nights in LaPorte, Indiana, for friends and family of Jeff Ake, still missing in Iraq. It just would really be nice if we did hear something, but uh, we've heard nothing. And uh, I guess we only have to be patient. He remains and, in our prayers. Wait, yeah, and he's in our prayers. Prayer and patience. That's what sustains the families of those five Americans still missing in Iraq. Their hopes must go beyond today's headlines. Byron Pitts, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. And that's the news. I'm Bob Schieffer, CBS News in New York. We'll have more on all of this tomorrow night. See you then. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Walmart and Sam's Club pharmacies accept all Medicare prescription drug plans. And at the Walmart price, you get a great value for your prescription dollars. After Zarqawi, will the violence now come to an end? Complete details and analysis tomorrow. See why more people are watching the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. This is CBS. The jury reaches a verdict in the Perry March conspiracy trial. Guilty or not guilty? We'll have a live report. What started as a police chase ended like this. The latest on the deadly crash in Davidson County. And it's country music's biggest party. The CMA Music Festival is in full swing. We have team coverage from downtown. 
And we've had a good afternoon with dry weather around the area for CMA Music Fest in Riverfront Park right now. The temperature coming in at 83 degrees. Your news begins now. Live with Sky 5. From your news and information leader, this is News Channel 5 at 6. And good evening, everyone. The verdict is in. A jury has found Perry March guilty of conspiring to hire a hitman to kill his former in-laws, Lawrence and Carolyn Levine. We have team coverage of the trial. We begin tonight with News Channel 5's Jennifer Krause. Jennifer, how long was the jury out? In all, Vicki, they were out about six hours. They officially got the case just after 6 o'clock last night, took a break just after 8 last night, and we're back here this morning and began deliberating. And just after 2 o'clock this afternoon, we got word that the verdict was in, and it was